What's going on, Serial Progress Seekers? Marshall here, and today's episode covers a very interesting topic that's all about how you can go about transforming strangers into friends or fans. So if you're a business owner or you're a marketer and you're trying to win fans for your business or just a person that's looking for tips on making some good friends, you're actually going to walk away from this episode with some really powerful techniques. This is episode 86 of the Serial Progress Seeker podcast. Let's go. Welcome to the Serial Progress Seeker podcast, where we share blueprints for building an unconventional life. Each week, we conduct expert interviews, talk strategies, and share advice for escaping the nine to five and building a life where you are free to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, all while making an excellent living. Okay, Serial Progress Seekers, let's get started with the show. All right, guys, I got to tell you about this thing I saw. Uh, oddly enough, on the Today Show, now I'm going to tell you right now, um, I just turned 40, so I'm feeling like maybe I have you know, approach that point in my life. Well, maybe the today show has to be a part of my day. I got to tell you, I, I never, I never saw this day coming. Um, and I'd like to blame my wife. Hey, you're not old till you start bird watching. Uh, Ooh. There you go. There you go. Ooh. So you're still young. I do young. need a new hobby. So watch out, watch out. I need a new hobby. There it is. Golden finches. That's where it is. <laughs> nice. That's funny. Wow. So we need an episode on bird watching. That's going to be oh. fun. I can't I wait like for it. that. I like it. I'm sure everyone will tune in for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No doubt. But anyway, I we, we have to we have to move on past the bird watching. So today's show. Check this out. Today's show. I was, I was I was watching this the other day, and there's a portion of the today show that I love every single day it comes on, and it's it's uh, something along the lines of like a boost. They give a boost every day because there's something positive in the world that's going on. Well, the other day I was watching and there's a guy on there that has developed this new app that just sounds so awesome. It's called the gas app. And it is specifically for teens because everything in the world is for teens, especially when it comes to apps. Um, but it's for teens and it's got a positive spin on things. And this is what just really warmed my heart. And I wanted to bring it to this uh, conversation because I just feel like all the publicity that people who are doing these kinds of things in the world can get, I'm all for. Uh, but it is all about... so. Essentially, what a what a kid does is go on this app. They download this app. They got profiles and stuff like that. But it's all anonymous. Um, so everything that you send and receive is is anonymous. You don't know who it's coming from or anything like that. But there are these polls that are set up, and you can choose the person that you'd like to send this message to to quote unquote gas them up to make them feel better about themselves. And uh, you know you can you can send I could send Ben to Dan, Ben one right now and says. You're a phenomenal dancer, Ben. And he gets this pop up true. on his phone, and it is true. It's 100% it's very true. true. Uh, so he gets this pop up on his phone, and it just says, Ben, you're a phenomenal dancer. And so I, when I heard that, I'm like, man, thank God for people like this because I cannot imagine, and you guys, you guys can speak to this way better than I can because you both have kids around this age that are starting to deal in cell phones and, 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 and dealing with a lot of social media and, Good God, we talk about all the time, at least in, in my own household, about how we can't imagine being a kid these days um, and how hard, that, how hard that must be. It's got to be scary. It's got to be terrifying. But when you see something like this, you hear about something like this, does it not warm your heart a little bit? Like, does it make you feel a little bit better? Like, maybe, maybe we're going to trend the other direction. We've swung so hard, and there's these terrible things that go on all the time, and these kids bullying each other and all of these terrible news stories out there. But maybe we're going to swing back a little bit with this Gen Z crowd, right? Like, I, I, it made me feel really good. Uh, number one, I have a lot of faith in this generation coming up. I have a ton yeah. of faith in them. Uh, I yeah. I am so excited for what's coming. And, um, you know, I, I think that that's – I don't know that everybody feels that way, but I feel like we've got some really good things happening. I, I think that this is interesting just because of this app. Is there still going to be bullies out there? Is there still going to be negativity? Yes. But the, the whole ball game is not that we have to get rid of all that. It's just that we continually put things in the way of kiddos that the positive outweighs the negative. And I think this is great. I, you know, I, I was looking at the app and uh, this is from somebody that is like done something from like this before. And uh, this is just a really, really cool sort of setup. So, you know, if you're, if your kids are talking about the gas app <laughs> out there right now, um, or you're, or you're a young, a young and listening, um, it's a very interesting thing. And I think that there's a lot of really, uh, a lot of really cool stuff happening 
in, in that vein right now. And I think this is just an app that is growing like crazy because of that. So no, you know, it actually leads me into kind of, I think what we want to talk about today, which is, you know, how do you make friends? How do you get people to be fans of yours? Like actual fans, not like some silly social media thing, but like, how do you get friends? How do you get fans? And like genuine interaction with human beings, how do you make that easier on yourself? How do you make yourself someone that is easy to become a friend with, easy to become a fan of? How do you put yourself in that position, even if maybe you've not been in that position before? And I think that this is something that a lot of people that listen to this think, if I could just be a little more social, if I could just, you know, interact with more people, um, success would follow. Um, and not just business success, but a lot of a lot of success. I think as adults, we have a lot of trouble making friends. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of us do. I right. think as adults, um, mm-hmm. a lot of us have a lot of trouble putting ourselves out there, our true mm-hmm. selves. And so, yep. what I think would be really cool for us to talk about today, um, and this is this is sort of a um, different kind of episode, but what are some tactics that we have employed in the past? And this is something that I'm very aware that I do these days in the beginning, maybe not so much. It was a lot of accidents that led to me knowing these things, um, and understanding what other people are doing, whether they realize it or not. What are some things that you can do to make friends faster, um, to endear yourself to complete strangers and to put yourself in a spot where people become fans of you? And I think that uh, we should get into this. So I would say yeah, before so. you even start with that, how did we all three become uh-huh. friends like that? Because <laughs> I, I don't know that I know the story of how you two, I mean, you're, you're from the same town, right? That's I'm right. Ass- yep. I'm assuming. Right. Yeah. So how did you two become friends? Um, I can give I can give a really good story. Uh, of <laughs> oh, my first interaction with Marshall, it, oh, wasn't, it wasn't wasn't really my first interaction. It was my <laughs> first awareness that Marshall was a human on the planet. Um, I had this really good friend named Joe, and Joe and I went to preschool together. Like, I've, and it's Joe and I have just been friends all the way through. And Joe yep. um, is just an incredible athlete. And um, <laughs> whereas whereas I dabble. Uh, Joe was an incredible <laughs> athlete, and um, so I remember. Still, still I remember, by the way, still an incredible athlete. It's still an incredible athlete. Man. I remember uh, going to this basketball camp, and you know, had my friend oh. Joe there, and there was a lot of other kids there, uh. and um, I remember just you know, there was this section where it was like you have awards at the end of the camp, right, for different things. One of the awards is for one on one, right? It's for the one on one competition. I go out, Tabitha, I go out in the one-on-one competition like within like the first or second round. Like I'm just not coordinated uh, at this point. I got a little more coordinated, but was not real coordinated at this point. And so it gets to the end of um, this tournament, and it's my friend Joe and Marshall. Um, and, uh, and so I just remember being like, Marshall's a heck of an athlete. Uh, but, but also Marshall – had just this incredible way of bringing people that they, you know, wanted to root for Marshall. So I, it, I just remember people chanting Marshall's name during this at the, you know, that he, they wanted him oh, to win. Man. But, but, Do but you the, remember the this, moral Marshall? of the story is, is like, oh, of course, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so the fun thing is, is the fun thing is, is we get to bring this up to Joe all the time because I actually, because I actually ended up winning that. So oh, I get to, beat, I get to still carry that Joe. because yeah. I did. It's my, it's literally my only claim to fame because Joe far and away so surpassed me as an athlete as we went on. But I got him back in in grade school. I got. That's it. awesome. It awesome. By the way. We will absolutely, you know, speaking of making friends, we will be sending him this clip. Um, oh, yeah. But I can't wait. I can't so the next wait. time I see him, I can bring it up. Got it. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so how Marshall how Marshall and I really kind of got together is, is we kept playing uh, ball, and we ended up on a basketball team together. Um, and then we just sort of kind of kept running each other, and we just enjoyed each other's company. And, and, you know, there was definitely some things, though, that about Marshall that stood out to me versus a lot of the other kids. Um and from there, it was just like, you know, we were into a lot of the same stuff growing up. And, and you know, yep. so that was that was how I met Marshall. Um, I met Tabitha because Marshall, uh, you know, I met Tabitha because I was starting a new business in a town. And um, one day um, 
Tabitha came in very friendly uh, to welcome me to the town and to welcome, you know, me as a person that was in business and Tabitha just kind of kept coming around um, <laughs> and was just, was just somebody that once again, it was the same sort of thing. All the other people that were around um, Tabitha was somebody that was like, you know, doing some things that I was like, this is somebody that I want to, to be in my life for a long time. And so, yeah. you know, for the both of you, uh, that that's sort of the ball game for me. Uh, I just I ran into you. You were both really fun people, and I just was like, I, you know, if I can, if I get to pick, <laughs> if I have a say in the matter, I want these people to be around for a long time. Tabitha, I don't know if you have anything to say about any of that, but As the only time I, the first time I remember meeting you was when you were working at the mattress place, and I had come in to sell video production and I brought yes. like my little book with the little DVD thing in there. Like that's the first time I remember. And then it was just, you're, you're right. Seeing you everywhere, like chamber stuff and lions club. And like, it just was continual. Oh, yeah. hung out in all the and cool so, places where all the cool kids were hanging out, you know? Sure. Sure. Right. Cause that's, cause that's who we are. <laughs> and then of course, no. I, guess, I guess tab, we, we met because of Ben, right? Like we, we met. did. At, is that, that's that's the reason. That's why I thought. I'm okay. I don't even remember the first sure. time. To be honest. I do. We were in Nashville? Nashville for we were there that's for a wedding, and we would went, went out like a night or two before the wedding even happened. And you were in town. I don't even remember why yeah. you were in town, <laughs> but we hung out. I, and I, I was, was a, like that. Yeah, it was probably, probably when I was there. living there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I, there, I didn't even so. realize you lived yeah. in Nashville. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I did. It was yeah, a fun I've night. had a lot of stops along the way. So you know. We we all kind of got to that spot uh, where we were friends, you know, because of slow progressive stuff. But it always starts with a spark, and I, I think that's the the point where yeah. I want to really get with this. It starts with a spark, and I think a lot of times people think that that spark is something that uh, just you know the stars align and everything comes together. But no, if you understand kind of what you're doing. You can actually drastically increase the chances that you become really good friends with somebody or they become a fan of yours. And I think that those are the things. You're not going to become good friends with everybody. You're not even going to become friends with everybody. Right. But you can still put yourself in a position to where you have a lot of people that think very fondly of you. And that, from a business perspective, from a life perspective, can be something that's very advantageous. Plus, it's it's just nice to have people that you can depend on. And it's nice to have people in your phone that even if they're not your best friend, you can pick up your phone and be like, I got a guy for that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think that, you know, what I really want to cover is what are some things that you can do that instantly endear people to you? And what are some social hacks that people can just walk away from and um, walk away from this podcast and go use? I'm going to give some of mine. Uh, I, I invite you guys to give some of yours. Um, but these are things that I use, I mean, pretty much all the time and it never fails, uh, to help me to get sort of in the mix of things. Um, okay. So one of the things that I am very, very big on is you have to find the, when, when you go into any social situation, you have to find the center of the room. Okay. You have to find the person that is standing up on a stage that every other person uh, has to go through. And this is this is a very, very big thing, right? You have to find the person that everybody has to go through. And I don't mean like you're trying to find somebody to schmooze them so that, you know, but who is the person that the conversation in a room is, they're a part of all of them. Yeah. So are we, let's set the scene. Are we talking like in a conference yeah. area or an or a office space or like a restaurant? Like... So what I'm talking about is actually everything. Whether you're talking about in a Facebook on Facebook, maybe in a Facebook group, maybe you're talking about um, you know in a center of a social circle. This this can actually be for online. This could be the center of a niche that you want to go after. This could actually be in an actual physical location. Okay. And so the first thing that I'm always trying to figure out in any of those situations is who is the person that all the conversation happens to run through. Who is the sort of the linchpin of the room? Who is yeah, the, the linchpin the conduit, of right? the right? Like yeah. yeah. And and as I said, most of the time this linchpin does is not somebody that necessarily cares to be in the middle of everything, but it's part of their job. You know, it's part of their job, it's part of kind of what they've signed up for, they're the middle of it. And 
one of the things that you really have to sort of figure out about these kinds of social situations, and some of this is, you know, could absolutely be used for evil. So I will preface this and give a disclaimer. <laughs> but one of the things that you have to figure out with this person is how do you form a relationship with that person? Does not have to be, you know, an unnatural thing. A lot of times it is just putting yourself in a position to where you have at least a casual relationship with them. Okay. Now, I'll give a couple of examples of this. Online, one of the things that um, I like to do, uh, especially now that we live in the age of Facebook groups abound, you know, they're they're everywhere. Um, I like to get in the middle of a Facebook group and offer help to the core person that's in charge of the Facebook group. Um, now, what I mean by that is this. I belong to several Facebook groups that are around a hobby, or, you know, whether it be music or they're around a tie-up of a business. And one of the things that I realize about a lot of these Facebook groups that I'm a part of, you know, I want to be a part of this audience because a lot of my customers live in these audiences or a lot of the really smart people that I want to talk to are browsing in the background in this audience. They're not saying anything. But there's always one person that, like, you could literally go to a Facebook group, you can look at members, and you can see who the admins are. Okay, so I'll give the online and then I'll give an offline version of it too. And... With the admins in a Facebook group, they always have problems maintaining or putting up enough content to keep people interested. They always have problems managing a community. And so one of the things that you know you can do to instantly put yourself in a spot is to be somebody that adds to the conversation. Not somebody that's trying to pull people out of the conversation, but adds to the conversation. And so that's something that I try to do. I try to go in and say, hey, if you guys – haven't heard what they've talked about in their YouTube video. Let me do a summary of their YouTube video for you in their Facebook group. You know, if you haven't watched this, that's, that's extreme value. You do that a few different times and you are immediately tied. You are tidally locked to this person and you are tidally locked to them because not only do they see you now and not only do they see you as, as an ally, but everybody else that is now in this group understands because I guarantee you do this kind of thing. They're going to interact with a post like that. Now everybody that's in this group sees you as locked to this person and useful to the group because you put useful content for them, but you also saw the, the, that you got, they see that you got the approval of the person that is the core owner of right. the group or runner of the group. So that's one yeah. of the things that far too many people get in these groups and they're completely in the background. Um, they just watch, they try to pull out what they can, or they're like over the top or they're trying to spam the group and pull people out because it is their audience, pull people out to their own thing. All you really have to do in a Facebook group, whatever you're trying to do to become important is help the person that owns it. That's it. You help the person that owns it. People will actually leave the group and come to your profile and see who the hell you are and see what you're about. Easy. Easy. That is an yeah. easy way to put yourself in the middle of a conversation. One of the other things that I really like is if I go into a restaurant, um, I'm looking for the bar, looking for the bartender. That's it. If I if I fly into a city and I don't know anybody there, and I and I want to start to get in the middle of what's going on in that community, I will go to a restaurant where there is a bar. And, and I try to go to a restaurant where there's a bar where there are people hanging out business wise, or there's people hanging out that might be sort of you know the kind of people that I'm trying to meet as friends, right? Yeah. I'm not necessarily going to a, a place that's just a bar. You can get into lots of trouble doing that. Uh, <laughs> trust me, I know I know this. <laughs> yeah. But but and everybody's laughing because there's plenty of stories that I'm sure we'll put on the <laughs> podcast someday. But yeah. the idea here is is when you go into a bar and you become friends with a bartender and you become somebody that is easy to serve for the bartender when you have a conversation in their downtime with the bartender there's so many people that come into these places that aren't fun to deal with there's so many of these people that come into this place that just don't want to have that kind of interaction when you are somebody that can have a it, it, and it's not you're not keeping them from their job but when you can have a conversation what immediately happens is People that are around you, whether they've been in this community forever or they're brand new, just like you, what they will see is you are getting the back and forth and you are getting the, it's it's not even spoken, approval of the person that is in charge in this place. Mm. And so 
and I and I'm not doing this as a way of like sneaking around and like trying to you know do some evil you know bringing people. But the thing is, is I have gone into I can't tell you how many cities, and I have met people that have helped my business. I have met people that have been become lifelong friends just because I went and sat down in a bar where other people that I wanted to get to know were, and I made friends with the bartender. And the reason yeah. is, is because that one nod of approval from the person that is standing on the stage, whether it be in the Facebook group, whether it be standing at the bar, the person that everybody else has to go through to get what they want gives you the time of day. It may seem stupid, but that one thing gets somebody to, to look over and say, so where are you from? And conversations start. Yep. It's because the person in charge seemed comfortable with you that everybody else around starts to feel comfortable with you too. And right. a lot of times that is an opening to everything else that can happen. Now, mm. l- let's take it out of this because I think that, you know, some people are listening like, I don't, I don't want to go to the bar. I don't want to, you know, I'm not a drinker. That's fine. Coffee houses are the same thing. Uh, church is the same thing. You know, there's so many things that we can sort of lean into where if you just become useful or helpful to one central figure, the ice starts to melt with everybody around because everybody in the room, whether they realize it or not, are always taking a mental inventory of where that person is and who they're talking to. And so if you're safe, and this is what it's really about, if you are marked as safe, then everybody else will start to assume that you are safe because that one person marked you as safe. And I hate that that's the way the society we live in sometimes, but in a lot of interactions – we don't want to start conversations with people that maybe are off in left field. We, we have a real fear of these things. And so it's just about a lot of times really putting yourself in that category of this person isn't a psycho. This person has at least the yeah. approval of this one person. And, and for those of you that have had trouble making friends in the past, you use that one tactic and that at least gets your foot in the door. And I got lots of other stuff, but uh, I, I will throw it to you guys thoughts on that how sneaky does that sound (laughs) and i said we were going to do some things that were that were real techniques that i've used Um, i don't really even think about it anymore but like what are your thoughts i think sometimes you're dissecting things that everybody else does naturally and you're finding those things to 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 be able to share because if you ask me how i make for i don't know that i can tell you how i make friends i'm just a lovely (laughs) human being that's it it's not hard it's very true yeah, it's very true. <laughs> but the fact that you well, can take something and dissect it enough to be able to share it with somebody else and and teach them how to do it is pretty incredible. Well, yeah. and I think that's the I think that's the key is it's like um I think that a lot of times we all accidentally do things and then we get out of them. We don't understand what happened. Mm-hmm. We don't understand why this particular event or this night or this day was successful in getting farther and the others weren't. And yeah. And I think that that is a really, really good thing. Now, um, you guys want some more? <laughs> oh, I was going to see what Marshall had to say about it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. I've got, I've got one specific question for you, Ben, because I you, you you touched on it right out of the gate here on our conversation today. Here I am. We, we've we already mentioned this on the podcast. I don't know why I keep freaking bringing it up, but I'm now 40 years old. And and I've seen, <laughs> I'm seeing this. And, and, and also something else that's come along with this is even though – I've now been in St. Louis. I live in St. Louis, Missouri. I've been here um, since 2020, but obviously I literally moved here the day COVID started right. essentially. Um, so I'm still kind of ingraining myself in St. Louis and still kind of learning the things that are around me and stuff. Cause for quite a while we couldn't go out and couldn't do anything. So um, that was, that was kind of a, a slow ingraining, but I, I found, and, and I was finding it, I had been finding it for years, but now I'm finding it even more increasingly difficult to make friends. And it's, it, it can be, it can be really, really tough. And I can tell you where my struggle is. And I'd love to know if you've got techniques for this, because I feel like if I can get over the initial hump of starting a conversation, then I feel really confident in my abilities to carry on a good conversation that could attend a, a, a essentially lead to a friendship, right? Sure. But I have such a hard time sometimes initiating. That's my, that is such a struggle for me. Um, figuring out, okay, this is someone I identify as someone I'd, I'd be interested in talking to, but I have no idea how the hell to approach them and how to start the conversation. So do you have any, like, just, I mean, you get, what, what kind of 
tips, tactics you got just for initiating conversations? What what, what kind of stuff do you do? Um, this is stupid, and I start and I, I did this by accident. Um, I, I really did this by accident. But what I did one time, um, there was somebody. <laughs> I walked into a restaurant, and there was somebody that looked like somebody else that I knew. Okay, <laughs> nice. so I went up to them and I said, "Hey, how you doing?" Like very just over the top. And because it was, I, th- I thought it was somebody and like they turned around and obviously it wasn't um, somebody I knew. And instead of acting like they didn't know me, they turned around. Oh, I'm good. How are you doing? And I know they didn't know me, but it was a, it was a sort of a interaction to where, you know, nobody, we were playing uh stranger chicken and nobody was going to admit. And I was, I think the key is, is I was warm. Uh, yeah. There was a very, there was a warmth to it. And so I kind of kept going. I was like, so how, how's the, how's the family, you know? And I, and I kept going with that. I walked away from that and I was like, that was funny. And I think <laughs> a lot of people maybe would walk away and be like, whoo, you know? Right. Uh, but what, what actually hit me is I was like, that went really well because I approached them like I knew them. Mm. And so what ended up happening, and I, I do this everywhere, you know, we get back into the, we get back into sort of this, this place is I realized there is a, there is a mental back door with people. And then once again, you can do this online, you can do this offline. But there's a mental back door with people that if you just you get to you get to choose one or the other here. You get to choose are you a friend or are you a fan? Okay. Mm-hmm. If you act like a friend, people will put you in that category if they're open to friends, right? If you're a fan, it's really hard to get to the friend category. So what I started to realize after this thing happened is I should just treat everybody with the same amount of warmth. Not like I'm trying to trick them into thinking that we're friends, but yeah. I should treat everybody with the same amount of warmth as I would a friend The from the first time I say hello. Sure. And most people don't do this because they think it's, they think it's inappropriate. But so I kind of got to this place where, you know, when I walk and you've, you've watched me do, both of you have watched me do this a thousand times. When I sit down mm-hmm. with somebody uh, and, and once again, this is something Tabitha does naturally that I don't think she even realizes she does. <laughs> it's funny that you said that because I'm like, in my head, I automatically think somebody's my friend. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, and this, but it, it, this is a mindset, right? And I actually mm-hmm. do too these days. And but, th- but, that's, but it started with that. And so what happens is, is when I walk into a place and I have a, you know, an opportunity to interact with somebody, I will. I'll say, hey, man, how you doing today? Hey, how are you? How's the week going? You guys been busy? Like, and it's just one of those things where it doesn't have to be some weird opening line. You are just generally trying to start a, you know, a conversation, but instead of just being general about it, you show real interest. I mean, yeah. like real, real interest. And that that's the thing. When I ask somebody how their week is going, it's not small talk to me. It's not. It's real. Like, I really want to know what's going on in your life. And if we are very, very good as human beings at interpreting tone. Mm-hmm. Very good when it when it's spoken, right? right. Um, online, you have to like beat tone into a, a few posts in a row, and then people start to get tone. But on but like offline, we're really good at tone. And so when you really start to put it into your voice that you genuinely want to know how somebody's week is going or how how their day has been, if they've been busy, like, and you are actually concerned. And, and one of the tricks with this is to actually look people in the eye when you talk to them. I mean, like, you know, that right. takes practice. Right. But for me, man, it is when I go into a place, I immediately scan the room and I understand who it is that I would like to maybe be friends with. Now, maybe I sit there for a couple of minutes and realize, nope, nope, don't want to be friends with them. But <laughs> when I kind of get that in my head, then, you know, I genuinely want to know if as quickly as possible, do they fit into this mold or not? If I come up and I'm, hey, how you doing? And, and they they don't interact well with it, we're probably not going to fit. At least I got that out of the way, right? Yeah. But yeah. for me, I genuinely am curious for the following things. How is your week going? How is your, you know, what do you do for a living? If I, if I know because it's the bartender or it's a waiter or waitress, then I'm like, you know, you guys have been busy. And what's so funny to me, and this is the thing that I have figured out over the years, the reason that is so deadly effective to get people to melt and to open up to you is because 99% of the people that walk in are not that way. Mm-hmm. And 
I mean, this is so stupid, but when I pull through the drive through of a place, just smiling and acting that way, you can tell people it's different. It's yeah. different. And so for me, ma'am, it is a general vibe that I have because I practice so much at this point. Everywhere I go, I am treating everybody like I've known them for a long time, just with the tone that I have. And I do go out of my way that if I see somebody, especially if I see somebody twice, like I saw them once, I left, I came back another time and they're there. Yeah. Um, I, I, you can pretty much without saying a word, acknowledge the fact that you've both been there before and be like, Oh, Hey, how you doing? Yeah. And they're going to recognize you. So it's as simple as that. And they will give you the cue back of whether they want to talk or not. And then you can start kind of peppering. We, we can get into this next. You can start peppering little things that are more personal that open up the door. And that, that that's really the next level of how to sort of get this really going. So yeah, that that's my thing is like, some people take this as completely disingenuine, but for me, it's not. I really come in with a tone that I know you, but number two, the questions that I ask that seem like small talk, I actually want to know the answer. Mm. And if your tone, deal. yeah, if your tone starts to reflect that, people sense it. And if they're open right. at all, then that's when a conversation starts. Yeah. So, and I would say I take it with me. The, the figuring out the one thing that I actually do, the, the one thing that I could dissect to be like, this is the one thing I do is that I share. I don't hold anything back. I'm not really a guarded person. I, I share about myself freely because I don't have anything to hide. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think right. that makes a big difference with making friends um, for sure. Well, yeah. and so so this is the thing is like, you know, we tend to gravitate towards people that are like us, but finding people that are like us as an adult can sometimes be hard. And Tabitha is very good at this. And I, and this was actually a beautiful segue to this next technique, <laughs> right? The next technique is once you start a conversation with somebody, all you've got to do, and this is the last wall to break down before the floodgates open. All you've got to do is make them comfortable getting out of small talk mode. That's mm. it. That's it. Like, because that question, whether you like the questions that I was throwing are still small talk questions. You have to give them permission to leave small talk and to give you something personal. The yeah. only way to do that is to give them something personal of yours. Now, none of us like the person that dumps their whole life on you and you're sitting there for 30 minutes and that's what they do. That's that's not what Tabitha's talking yeah. about. What we're talking about here is giving somebody something that is incredibly personal to you. And, you know, there's, there's hacks to this too, which I'll get into in a second, because you can look at me right now and you can pick out a few of the things that I've done to myself that open this up. But one of the things that I, I do when I'm in a Facebook group is, you know, I'll introduce myself and I'll give some very personal stuff about my life and then I'll give the content that I was trying to give. And the more of that you like pepper in. Uh, the more people feel like they already know you and the more they'll reach out to you personally because they right. you trick them into thinking they're closer to you because they know things that maybe they shouldn't know or they don't know about everybody else. But in real life in person, you know, I get into this mode of, yeah, I'm actually here on work. Uh, I, I, I do this for a living and I'm actually here in town because I'm at this conference because I came to see this guy. And this guy, the reason I came to see him is because he's got this book and the book is all about X. And I, I'm just really in my point, this point in my life right now, I'm really trying to make myself better. And so, you know, I got on a plane and came all the way here because I wanted to see this person speak. And like that one little snippet that you give somebody gives them permission to be vulnerable. Mm. You know, you gave them something small that they should not know. You know, most of the people that are around them, they, they're day to day. It's very surface interactions, but you gave them something that no, no. And it gives them permission to open up. And start to talk to you. And when you do that, um, if they're open at all to being a friend or at least having a good interaction with another human being on the planet, they're going to start giving you some of their things too. And that is you giving them that next step, which is permission to get away from small talk and to give something personal. And that's, that's, I tell you, for most, and I want to hear your thoughts on it, you guys. But for most of my interactions that turn into really good friendships and really good connections and, you know, fans and friends, that's how it all started. It was those three pieces of the puzzle that opened the door 
And like I said, you can't force anybody into this, but if they're going to be responsive at all to something like that, that's how you take them through the steps that get them to open up and to have a conversation. I can't tell you how many times I have had an hour to two hour conversations with somebody that like, that was our only interaction in person. That was it. That was yeah. of the history of us. That was it. But I'm still friends with them online. We still wish each other happy birthday. We still follow each other. And that's the thing is that when you can go around to everywhere that you go and have that sort of approachability, life gets easier. It is an absolute cheat code to getting where you want to go. So thoughts. I, and I, I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. Um you know, what <laughs> is it? I always feel devious or I always feel like people are going to think I'm devious when I give these things out. I know that it's just something that like I would just do, but I've really thought about it because, you know, you know me, like I want other people to be able to take these things. And like I said, these can be used for evil, but if you're not an evil person, I think it's, it's just learning communication. Right. So what do you, what do you guys think? Yeah, I th I think the thing that you figured I, I think the thing that you figured out, buddy, is is being able to put a name to it and being able to put processes to it and stuff like that because I'm kind of with Tabitha, there's a lot of the stuff that I kind of do naturally and maybe that I can't even always pick out, but you've been very uh intentional in the way that you've gone about uh you know, kind of creating friendships and stuff like that. I something that I always saw about myself and and this is I, I feel like I'm going to take a step back in this conversation. So sorry about that. But uh, cause I, cause I see my relationship. Uh, I don't know the way, the way I go about developing relationships a lot more general in the fact that, um, you know, I've always felt it very, a, a very big strength of mine was being able to establish common ground with just about anybody I speak with. And that's, that's through a lot of, um, you guys already know this, but I, I moved around a lot as a kid. I moved around, I've moved around a lot as an adult. So I've been able to experience, uh, you know, a lot of different people from a lot of different places and stuff. And I, I take that into every relationship and every conversation I have. So I've always felt very, very good about that ability, but something that is so basic and, and some people are going to listen to this and go, well, yeah, duh. But this is something I think is very, very important is, and, and it's something that we've been, I've uh, actually, you have, have mentioned this on other podcasts before and, and talked about how people like to talk about themselves. So I take that into my conversations with people. And, and, and the way I do that is it, it sounds so simple and dumb, but just ask questions. Like I just feel the need to ask a question when I'm in a conversation with someone and I don't do it. Just like you said, it's about being able to do it with a, with a genuineness to it. But I do it because I want to know the answer either because I'm trying to get to that common ground so we can set that up or because I know that I can see that they're going to challenge me in some way here in just a minute in this conversation. And then that's when I re we really start to develop the spark of a conversation is like, they're going to, they're going to come at me with, with a thought process or a background moment or something like that, that I've never thought about before. And I go, wow, okay, I just learned something from this interaction. So I, I to me, it's I, I've always seen things as a, you know, I'm trying to establish common ground. The way I do that is ask questions. That's good. But that seems so basic in comparison to what you were just talking about. So it's, it's, it's kind of funny, but that's just kind of how I go about things. Well, and I, I want to, I want to get tapping this stuff on this. And I think that that's sort of the next level to what we're talking about is once you've become vulnerable, um, it's, it's good to turn around and ask them to be vulnerable, but you don't ask someone, Hey, you tell me something, you ask a question <laughs> and you know, to be genuinely interested in another human being and not just to need someone to sit there while you talk is rare. And when yeah. you can provide that, um, yeah, you get into some very, some very interesting places really, really fast. So Tab, oh, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on that? So that just brings up this TikTok that I saw the other day and we could throw it in the show notes if, uh, if you want. Uh, but there was a lady on there that was talking about how to get some really meaningful conversations in a dinner conversation. And she, when she's talking about it, she's like, this is not a beginning of the night conversation. This is like, everybody's kind of had a couple of drinks. They're at the dessert, you know, the dinner's kind of winding down and you're just, you know, trying to make meaningful conversation. And she said, this is the question that you need to ask. And I loved how she put it. Um, 
this is the scenario. You have died. You're, you're, you're gone. You're dead. You're, you're at the standing at the pearly gates. And before you get into heaven or wherever it is you're going, <laughs> they say, we're going to give you five minutes back on earth. You're going to leave here. You're going to go back to earth for five minutes. But in that five minutes, you cannot see any friends or family that you knew while you were alive. Because mm. obviously that would traumatize the hell out of them. Right. <laughs> Where do you go for those five minutes? And wow. she said those kind of that conversation, because it, you're going to get, you know, moments in time for that person that they would like to go back to or something that made them feel a certain way or somewhere that they've never traveled to or the place they did travel to that was the best. The, the conversations that can come from just that kind of que- that kind of question is yeah. just in- incredible. Um I thought it was a really interesting that is question to bring up. Yeah. Well, let's let's deconstruct that too, um, because I think that that's that's an interesting. Because I I like step by steps, right? Yeah. And what what I think is really interesting about interactions and and making friends and sort of how you get closer to people, people become very close to you when you challenge them in that way. You know, mm-hmm. and so I think that's the thing is it's like we go from complete stranger to breaking the ice to giving something personal to getting something back. And where you kind of go from there is you sort of get into this mode of familiarity and then familiarity with repetition turns into more of a situation where – um you have permission to dig and you have permission to ask questions. And what I love now is there's so many, there's so many places. And and this is what's so funny. Not only can you bust that question out to somebody that you have familiarity with and really bring them in, but anybody that is around them that maybe you don't know so well, um, that will bring them in closer to you too. But here's, here's the caveat to this that I really want to bring up to people. And this is, I'm so glad you brought this up. That is a question that you need a familiar linchpin in a conversation to ask. It will bring that person even closer to you in a way that they never were before. So we're getting into like real friendships now. But this is also the cheat code. What do we have in this situation with other people that are maybe their friends? What do we have in this situation that we started talking about at the beginning? We have that person that everybody's going through, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's imagine that you are at a dinner party and you've got your core five friends and they've got some friends that they brought in and you know, you've know you got maybe two or three people you don't know. It's a cheat code to get immediately closer to the people that came in. You don't have to go through all those other processes with those people because that's the kind of question because you have that person that's connecting them. Now you've got the blessing already that you're okay. You're safe. Right. Mm-hmm. This is not some psychopath that this person right. is that, you right. know, this is a random. And so when you do have that linchpin, when you do have that person that puts you in that mode with a new person in your group, asking a question like that, you're allowed to ask it because of your close friend mm-hmm. or your person that you're more familiar with. But people that maybe you've met for the first time now will immediately skip the line with all these other things and you can get to really, really deep things because you ask a question like that. And so I think that yeah. understanding that you can use that tactic to skip the line and a lot of this is big. And so, you know, after that question gets asked and, um, you know, it's probably answered in a group setting like that. But after that question gets a- asked and answered, uh, going up to somebody afterwards and being like, I loved your answer to that question. I never really thought about that. But like, this is interesting. Have you, you know, you know, tell me more about that. Like, that's such a good sort of, scenario and how we do this. And, and you know, like I said, I obsess over the steps. You know, I obsess <laughs> into, okay, one, now you're here, you can get here. You you couldn't get there before because you couldn't jump that high. But now yep. that you've hit these few steps, how do you get to the next thing? And then is there a hack? Is there a way that I can take someone brand new and not have to, you know, climb each step to get there? And so I love that question. That's that's such too. a good, I actually saw that TikTok too. That was good. That was well, it's funny. It's funny too. You talk about steps. So I'm starting to think about this too. You know, we're, we're talking about friendships and fans but you know there's some of this that digs into you know romantic relationships too so i specifically thinking about the first night i met my wife so just just so you guys know like this is this is how it went in my head so we spent probably <laughs> which is funny ben you were there uh we spent probably you know 6 7 hours together our first night talking literally 
talking the entire time. And I can remember wait, wait. specifically. You said in your head. So were you really talking oh, no, or did you just think you were no, talking? No, no. 100%, 100% talking now. This wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll we'll sidebar on the rest of that conversation, but yeah, uh, but th the whole piece of this was, and I think it's so cool because Ben, you're talking about steps. I can remember going through every step in that one conversation. I can remember the initiation of the conversation. I can remember us starting to ask some of the surface level questions that you ask when you're starting to talk to someone, and then I can I can remember a specific like shift, and then all of a sudden we start getting into questions like Tab just asked, and I'm going. Man, I can remember that. And then here we are, you know, fast forward eight years later. And I, this is this is my wife. Like, and it just goes to show you that um, that every single real, meaningful uh, conversation that kind of has lasting effects on you goes through that entire process. See, and I remember, I, I remember that night too. But I remember consciously going through those steps. See, there you go. Yeah, like I remember, and 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 just for anybody listening. Um, to give you this story, you know, this was the night that Marshall met his wife mm -hmm. and I was there. We were hanging out. We ran into Marshall's wife and one of her friends. Uh, we didn't know them from anybody else in the place. We were just out yep. having a good time. Um, but this is what's really interesting. That conversation got started because we were leveraging the bartender. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. We were actually having a conversation with the bartender. The bartender deeming us as safe made us safe. Yep. And it, like I said, this is things that happen so fast, you guys. And it does like once again, I say bartender, everybody's like, oh, they hang out in bars. Yeah, we do, but not exclusively. Like there's other yeah. places this works. Yeah. The uh, this is just me feeling guilty, right? Uh, so, <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. um, I don't really feel guilty. But the <laughs> the point is, is we went through this. We were deemed as safe. There's a lot of, especially if you're girls in a bar um, setting. It can be it can be a, a lot different than if it's guys. I'd love for it to be. I, I'd love for it to be equal, but I know that there are much more concerns for females in a bar setting mm -hmm. or out on their own setting. And I wish it wasn't that way, but yeah. it is. And so us branding ourselves as harmless <laughs> was yeah. is is important. And we did mm -hmm. that by getting the nod from the bar the bartender um, and, and having conversations there. And then and then right. all as, as Marshall said, all of these steps took place. Um, and there was nothing, there was nothing, you know, I don't remember us being like, oh, we're going to go meet people and, you know, meet your wife tonight. You know, there was none of that, Absolutely not. but it was like, what was it, the opposite of that? <laughs> yeah. What it, what it actually was is, you know, getting into a situation, understanding the situation in which you're in, how to leverage that situation so that everybody can have a good time and people can interact what yeah. I hate is when you get into a situation and it doesn't, the flow of it doesn't allow people to get to interact and to right. get to mix it up. The idea with humans being together in a place, whether it be online or offline, is that they get to interact and mix it up. When I put together a Facebook group for something in my business, I really don't care that people are there for me. Yeah. I, they're there for each other. And bringing like-minded people together, that's what you want. And so all you want to do in any situation, if you're the the, the one that is on the stage – you know, quote unquote stage is you want to foster ways for people to interact with each other. And, yeah. you know, there's a whole podcast that we could do about creating that sort of environment. But I think the the big thing here is anybody that's listening to this, if you're maybe not so good at making friends, if you're not so good at getting yourself out in the mix, follow those steps. It will take a little bit of practice, I promise you. And I'm going to tell you, you're not going to walk into every situation and it be a situation where those things are going to work. But 90% of the time they will. Um, I don't get frustrated when they don't. I just know this is not this is not that time. This is not yep. that situation. And I'm as I said, I'm very outcome independent on those things. Sometimes you walk into a place and be like, there is no conversation to be had here. I'm gonna move on to a different place. And so understanding what that is is you have to put yourself through those situations. But if you follow that to a T, I guarantee you. You're going to get into a place to where the world starts to open up for you because simply people want to have interactions with other people. It's just making sure that you're able to pull down the walls that are up on purpose and for good reason. These these walls keep people safe. Okay, And I, and I want to be completely open to the fact that these walls keep people safe. But if you understand how to make people feel safe, to bring down some of the walls naturally, um, the right people will find you. Because they're mm -hmm. there and they're just waiting for that window. They're just waiting for that opening. They're just waiting 
to meet a friend. And, I'm, and that's the thing that I think that we all have to understand as we get older, it gets harder to make friends because we're not placed in environments um, by other people that yeah. these things will just happen. We yeah. have to put ourselves in those situations. We are in charge of that. And the quicker you understand that you're in charge of putting yourselves in those situations, but also once you're in those situations, creating an environment to bring people that people will be able to come close, it gets less about being, you know, ooh, I'm doing something that is, I'm social engineering this. Like, that's not what you're doing. You're just opening up the door so that communication can happen. And you want to talk about something that will change your life, go back through this podcast again, listen to it again. And I guarantee you what we have covered today is huge. Everybody here, and, I, and you've heard it from all of us, everybody here understanding this, it's sometimes not understanding it, but doing it anyway, just naturally yeah. sometimes because it just happened, put us in better places in our lives, whether it was a business thing, whether it was a personal thing. And I, I think that's why I wanted to do today uh, with this topic is I think that if you start to really understand what's going on and how human interaction works, you can put yourself in some really good positions. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of the Serial Progress Seeker podcast. If you want to listen to more episodes, learn more about our mission, or send us questions or feedback about the show, go to SerialProgressSeeker.com. You can help the mission by subscribing, reviewing, rating, and commenting wherever you listen to or watch podcasts.